Oh my goodness, I know everybody was just shaking in their chairs, could not wait, ZTL, when is the Assassin tier list coming out? Because this is the most hype class in the game. I mean, every single one of these units, straight bangers, not a loser among them. And I can't keep that facade going because Assassin is probably the most mid to worst class in the entire game. I mean, it's not helped out by the fact that they pretty much have a negative class damage modifier and they're also all kind of specializing in being star geners and unfortunately ever since 2030 came out and our dps has started to get better being able to bomb their own stars or god forbid provide their stars every single turn for themselves assassins have kind of been in a really bad spot now that does mean when there is an absolute banger assassin that comes out they make waves and <clears throat> i'm looking at one of them in particular on the bottom row they made exceptional waves and almost too many waves to the point that a lot of the other assassins kind of looked bad by comparison so it's definitely a very odd class but if you don't know how we do these tier lists basically at the end of every year so that would be 2023 for na i like to do these tier lists to look at where the current standing of all these units are with the rank ups they had at the time and you know what units we have at the time meaning you know if comma got a buff tomorrow that doesn't apply to this tier list right or if i don't know mhx got a buff that's na exclusive right now now, you know that wouldn't apply to this list so just keep in mind it's the very end of 2023 because i like to kind of compare and contrast these every single year and see how the meta and you know things have just kind of shaped uh, as we've gone through fgo but yeah assassins as you guys can tell i am so so excited to be talking about assassins my favorite class but let's start off with an actual good unit probably one of the better free-to-play assassins that we have in kojiro now i know a lot of people are going to be like flipping out being like kojiro in b tier that's that's an a e x but like, let's Let's remember that your grailed Kojiro is different from what the normal Kojiro is going to be. I agree that if you want to take him, grail him out and, you know, try to improve his stats because he is a bronze unit and that does hurt him out uh, quite a bit is that his stats are not very high naturally, but he's got a good enough kit that if you do want to grail him, you'll get some good mileage out of him because his kit at baseline is just solid. He's doing a little bit of everything. He has survivability. He can cleanse debuffs. He has ramping damage as uh, one of his more recent buffs. I mean, they've even pretty much buffed everything about this guy so he can immediately access stars and uh, on top of being an assassin means he can gen a lot of stars himself. He's just kind of a good unit in general. It's just his crit numbers and his NP damage numbers might be a little low if you haven't invested anything into him because again, he is a low rarity unit, but I do think he is one of those low rarity units that you do get your bang for your buck on. Unlike <laughs> my boy over here, Cursed Arm, who I can't put in D tier because I do think Cursed Arm has some usage, but I'm pretty sure I was the only guy that started FGO and instead of leveling Kojiro, I leveled Cursed Arm because I like the whole idea that he has the coup dodge skill. He has three dodges that are not turn based. He can bomb stars on a very, very quick cooldown. And, you know, like any other assassin, he could gen a whole bunch of stars. The one thing that I think really holds Cursed Arm back is that his damage, like we were just talking about how Kojiro, you know, low rarity might not have the craziest damage cursed arm might as well heal the opponent with what little damage he is doing you know it's fine that you know he could stick around for a long time because of his dodge and he can really provide a lot of stars but dude we got to do something about that NP damage we got to do something about that because if we do if we fix up his damage just a little bit we could kind of stick him up over here and i think they tried to buff his np over on jp recently and i have not thoroughly tested that out yet so maybe over on jp this is going to be something that is fixed but right now on na it is not very good all right we have uh we have steno over here and i'm not gonna cap let's let's not all lie and kid ourselves here yes you could do some funny charm things with steno over here and yeah she does double buff divine servants but can we just stop pretending like that's something that's good in the like current age of fgo that like having a double buff on your charisma is like the craziest thing that is a nice thing if you happen to be doing it. You know, Moriarty happens to buff evil people twice and he can make them evil. You know, Jolter can double buff people that are dragons, but that's not like the selling point of Jolter. Her selling point is the insane damage and the crits that she does. Whereas Uriel, or not Uriel, but Steno, let me not disrespect Uriel. Steno over here, outside of that, you know, she can charm, not charm, but I think it's stun males on her NPs and then she has the charm skill on like I think it's her second skill let's just she's just not good and i know i'm preaching to the choir because ain't nobody think that steno's actually good but i gotta cover those few people that are gonna say hey but you know 
double buffing divinity. It's like, now let's just not pretend like that's even remotely like good in today's modern age. At least I could take cursed arm and kill a boss after like 500 turns, right? I could at least use him for something as a new player. Steno, I don't know, good luck like charming any of the like more recent bosses that have insane like debuff resistance or just straight up debuff immunity. So just no point to even using this unit. Jin K, I think is kind of bordering on usability now. And she's kind of got like that anti-king niche going, which I don't think is the craziest niche because king is not the most widespread thing. But hey, she went from being D tier last year because I, I took, look, took a look at the tier list that I had yet last year and she just was not very high up there at all. Now she's at least able to do something. There is a reason to put Jin K in one of your teams. You can slot her in there if you need to take down a king. She at least has a decent enough kit for being able to do that. Sanson... Sanson, I think, is one of those ones like Kojiro that if you want to invest in Sanson, if you want to grail him a little bit or put gold foes, stuff like that into him, I think you can get some nice mileage out of this guy because he's able to hit humans and humanoids. Originally, I think he just was only able to hit humans, which was not as good. That doesn't apply to servants, but I believe they gave him the humanoid buff uh, later on, and that definitely helped him out way, way more. And I mean, he also has like just nice heals going on for himself. He can kind of take care of himself. I think he gets some decent mileage out of Sanson. And even if uh, they never gave him the humanoid buff, the human one, I think he could still get some fine mileage out of. There's quite a few just human enemies that will fight, you know, like just a bunch of random soldiers and stuff. Um, say you're doing like the Leonidas challenge quest where you have one main boss that maybe you have, you know, your dedicated DPS to, but then, you know, Sansa gets to start chopping away at the uh, the hoplites over there because they're, you know, technically humans as well. So you can just start taking them out. He's got a reason that you could use him if you had a mind to. And again, we're talking about assassins. So realistically, you're probably just going to bring a berserker <laughs> or like an alter ego instead to do their job. But, you know, we're, we're trying to be nice to them. Right? We're trying to pretend like they're a real class. Uh, you're just not super great, man. Like, I, I'm preaching to the choir on Phantom of the Opera. Uh, same thing for Mata Hari. Mata Hari, they're, they're trying to buff her over on JP. They're trying to make her a bit better. But I think the problem is that she's always going to struggle to find a place being a very debuff heavy servant. And the deeper into FGO's quote unquote power creep, if you want to call it, that we get, the less and less good debuffing you're going to get because in order to kind of combat some of that stuff and to make the bosses harder, they're starting to give them, you know, high debuff resistance, debuff immunities. And so we're just going to start getting to the point where like most bosses, if not all of them, are just straight up immune to most forms of debuffs. And it's just going to make servants like Mata Hari really struggle a little bit. Camilla, I also think, has a solid enough niche. If you're a newer player, you will get some pretty good mileage out of Camilla. Having a power mod against females and, you know, being an assassin I mean you could bring her against riders or berserkers or even neutral against, um, you know, extra class people. If you don't have someone to, say, take out like a BB going through Seraph or something like that, she can be kind of decent for that, you know, being able to uh, beat some of them up. And her kit itself isn't the worst thing I've ever seen. It's not great, but I mean... She could make stars. She could reduce chances of being crit. She could suck enemy NP. You know, she's got good things going for her and definitely is carried by the anti-female niche. But, you know, hey, she's at least got stuff going for her. Uh, Jack is super weird because I don't know if I would really consider Jack to be like an A tier servant. I think I'm going to introduce B plus just for Jack because here's the thing. We have like, let me just let me just kind of explain between our single target quick assassins. Kama is like the absolute apex of what you want to be as just an assassin. I mean, she's got huge batteries. She has an insane guts that's not on a turn limit. She gives herself attack. She overcharges NP. She heals. She just takes out alter egos for some reason, makes her charm niche work even better, right? Uh, charms the enemy at an 80% chance baseline. Third skill makes that pretty much guaranteed. I, I would say guaranteed. I don't think I've ever missed the charm whenever I pop the third skill, although I'm certainly sure it's possible absolutely insane mhx i probably would also put her in ex as well but i don't like having too many overlapping people in that ex tier i think if you're gonna have like one single target quick assassin it should probably be that one that's considered ex and then the other ones should probably be closer to like that a tier but mhx is also very very good and just being able to take out a bunch of sabers that's kind of like a nice niche but even if you look at her kit itself she's just doing a lot of very good generic -y things you know she's got survival she can you know gen star she can crit a lot of good stuff jack on the other hand has a very good niche against females which is something that really carries camilla it's just the rest of her kit is not very real i mean she's got the one turn mana burst a dodge she can you know heal 
and that's kind of it, right? Like, there's the, um, I think it's the second or third skill, the one that's functionally just non-existent, it's not very good, that people are asking to get buffed, because Jack realistically doesn't need a whole lot, because her quick cards are so insane, she was made at a point where DW, you know, before Lysengo, in the dark times when DW was running things, uh, they did not respect quick cards, very much and you can see that in people like jack and okita who have insanely high np gain and insanely high hit quick cards i mean jack is repping like 1.1 percent np gain with five hit quick cards that is ridiculous like you do not see that anymore in fgo like it's super insane so much to the point that before scotty was coming out you could just still easily loop jack's np back you know you could just do quick chains and loop her nps back and it was really really solid but unfortunately her kit is uh, it's it's just a telling of the time like it's a year one kit where it's not really doing a whole lot and they're not really doing anything to help her out so i definitely think that if you were to look at jack and you were to like look at her performance she loops really easily she could do really good damage against uh you know female opponents but she's just gonna need more stuff moving forward but i think the basis of a good unit is still there um all right this i need some people to stop being little babies about jacqueline hyde jacqueline hyde is actually not all that bad after recent buffs you can actually bring him for his niche is it great not particularly it's not like the best thing you can be doing but it at least has some usability like i don't know why you would bring it against say rider enemies you would just sacrifice you being super effective and taking less damage to become a berserker to take more damage from your opponent but hey at the very least if you don't have a good berserker on your account and you just need someone that can do good crits i suppose and kind of just easily access that niche because they gave him the battery i guess then jacqueline hyde is like pretty decent like what i'm saying is like you look at his kit he's definitely usable but c tier is the definition of usable you can use them if you put your mind to it but you know i, I don't i don't know if any higher than that i mean this might even be a little bit of a stretch for him but hey i'll, I'll use him every now and then maybe i'm a little bit of a fan of prototype but solid enough you can get some mileage out of him uh, Shiki, I'm gonna go ahead and stick her as, like, a single target arts assassin. I think she's probably the best one we have. Uh, yeah, I think she probably is. She's doing pretty much just the best of everything. I think the only thing she does, no, 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 she has a, she has a dodge buff, never mind. I was about to say that, oh, she probably doesn't have survivability, but I'm like, no, 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 she has the, uh, the dodge crit skill. You know, she's got pierce invul. I think she pierces defense on her NP as well. As the battery, I think the only thing is that I'd like to see them maybe make the... I think it's the one turn 50% arts buff a three turn. I think I'd like to see that or something just to uh, help her with longevity and fights. But Shiki's just really good. Also very helped out by the fact that free NP5 can't go wrong with a very high damaging unit that you get an NP5 for free. Um, So I've been using Kiritsugu a little bit more. I don't think he's like super, super crazy, but I think he is bordering on like this kind of could be a really good unit in the future. The high hit arts cards are very, very nice. The fact that you can kind of just taunt either himself or taunt one of your um, supports if you want to keep another support alive or keep himself alive. Something along those lines is very helpful. Pierce Invul, I think, is also very, very good. And then I think it's just not necessarily maybe a plus or a minus, but being a star genning servant that's also an arts unit is just very fun to play with i guess it's not again not, not really a point for or against him but just kind of fun to play with you know you can gen a lot of stars and do really good arts crits and get some pretty decent refund back i do think kitty is kind of bordering on being a better unit but it is a little bit sad uh that he did come out with what i would consider is a very very strong free-to-play unit i mean they just kind of do everything you would want a very strong free-to-play to do they refund really really well they have the omni card buff so when brave chains or mighty, mighty chains come out my bad when those come out she'll be really really strong again that np gain is insane you do have to manage the heal a little bit because she will remove her offensive buffs but it's just timing like it's you know it's year seven over here on na it's year nine on jp if you ain't got your timing down you're playing the long, the wrong game, little bro. Like, you gotta play something else. So, she's definitely very, very strong. She's a very, very strong free-to-play option. Which is, I think, a very unfortunate for uh, Kiritsugu over there. 
Shuten's pretty hard to rank because I think Shuten is strong because she just does good damage. Having that Oni charisma is super, super strong. You know, being able to buff your attack and NP damage, I think will always be good. An AOE charm plus having guts to keep yourself alive are both very strong things. And she applies a million different debuffs on the enemy, which I feel is something that will get better as time goes on. As we start to get more and more uh, CEs and different servants, that plus off of those negative debuffs things like um if you're charmed you get this buff if you're poisoned you get this buff i think stuff along those lines as we start to see more and more things come out for that that'll continue to get better i'm actually just waiting for shuten to probably get like some kind of mini power mod kind of like shiomi got over here that gives her bonus damage if the enemy is poisoned i think something along that line could really work they also gave her a 30 percent battery so it's easier to get to her np but don't misunderstand because she only has one hit on her np you're not using her for looping or anything so this is more for like shuten's challenge quest applicability and i think she's got a very good kit for dealing with just general enemies you throw her way and it cannot be said enough that she does do some very solid damage uh kotaro man like Kotaro is a servant I probably was considering putting closer into B tier, but then I started using him a bit more around, what was it, summer four? And then I continued to use him for the next year after that. And he just, I don't know, just started feeling not quite as good. It might just be like a personal thing for me, because I've heard good things from people that have uh, gotten some strong mileage out of Kotaro, but it's just, whenever I bring him, it's just the, the debuffs aren't sticking. You know, we're not getting, the, I don't think it, it's his is terror. I'm trying to remember. He has... He has one of those things. He has like one of the blue clock buffs. I think it does the skill seal. So I don't think that's tear. I think that's frenzy or something else. But yeah, like this, they don't seem to work out super well. His damage just doesn't seem to be all that great whenever I bring him out there. And I just, I'm having troubles, you know, taking down bosses with him. So I don't know, maybe it's just not using him as a dedicated DPS. Maybe you got to bring him as like a support for another DPS. But then in that case, I'd rather just bring Scotty or Waver or somebody else. And so in that vein, C tier seems kind of uh, pretty solid for him. I'm going to put Serenity in C+, because Serenity, I think, is on the come up to be like a very solid servant. Uh, but I think someone like, uh, let me, where is he? Like Chiyome. I think Chiyome still has like a head and shoulder above her. And I would probably put Chiyome around this like B tier area. Maybe Chiyome could go up to B+, but I think Serenity's kind of bordering on that same thing where they're both on the ups from the last couple of years. They've been getting buffs that have definitely been helping them out. Serenity getting the arts buff was absolutely insane for her because she can actually do real damage and it helps her NP refund as it buffs the NP gain of her arts cards. I think that's huge for her. Chiyome getting the ability. I mean, I think they also gave her an arts buff <laughs> as well because I think she, no, no, no. She, she dropped with an arts buff, didn't she? I'm not, I'm not misremembering that. Uh, but I think the one thing that is definitely going to help her out a lot is something she gets during the road to Lost Belt 7, uh, the Atlantis part getting that which i just have to double check right now <laughs> i had to make sure that i wasn't wrong that she already had it but yeah we do get it this year that will give her the power mod against the cursed enemies which is really good it actually gives chiome a purpose and a use into applying all that curse which is something that i love it's why i'm hoping that maybe berserker jolter gets like even a 20 to 30 percent power mod against burned enemies because it gives you a little bit more incentive to just kind of go for that niche and it makes that niche that they have just a bit stronger so i think shiome is going to get a lot better this year and serenity is kind of on the ups we'll have to see what they uh, continue to do with her um skahawk does not have her anti-divine power mod yet she just got that on jp so right now, but she is still a free NP5 that pierces. She has Pierce Invul. She heals. She has the Taunt, which is nice. She has a decent enough quick buff. I would say that she at least borders that like C plus B tier. Like if you need to bring Skahawk to like beat somebody up and you don't have a better assassin, you can put in some work with Skahawk. She'll definitely get a lot better when she gets that Divinity buff. Then I think she might securely crack into something like B tier. Uh, again, being a free NP5 means she can do some really, really good damage. And piercing Invul as a free-to-play unit is just always really nice. It lets you get around, you know, dodge Invul buff. So I think she's kind of more on the ups compared to some of these other people. Ah, oh, Cleopatra. Oh, dude, this is always the rough one for me because I love using Cleopatra. But dude, if you do not get that Imperial Privilege buff, she is a completely different unit. She is so donkey balls if you do not get her that imperial privilege if you get her the imperial privilege i would be fine saying she's like a secure a tier unit like i would say she's 
super nice. She's got good consistency. She refunds like NP HP every single turn. She's got like, she, you know, she gives her that buster buff on her NP that goes into that massive 44% attack buff. And she's really thick because she's got 44% defense. But if you're not landing the Imperial Privilege, which is a 60% chance, and God forbid you don't have somebody like Ozzy or Lan Ling to maybe guarantee the buff, which is you having to bring another unit to guarantee that she gets that buff, dude, she she feels like she's C+. Plus if you don't get her that buff, if you don't get her Imperial Privilege, she, she feels like she sucks. Dude, she feels real, real bad. So I'm going to meet myself in the middle. I'm going to put her in like this b ish range just to kind of signify that with Imperial Privilege, she could probably go higher, but without it, it kind of anchors her down. And that really think, uh, I think really hurts her if you don't get that buff. Uh, Hassan is definitely on the ups. This boy is on the ups. Um, so now we kind of have our trifecta of single target arts, buster, and quick. And Hassan, not only is he good, he's going to get even better next year. They were just like, you know what? Chuck this guy a battery. I mean, this guy is still one of the better solos units in the game because he's just thick he heals gives himself that fat defense he's got a guts now he gets stronger if the guts procs gets more mana burst does more damage really good into soloing little small dudes because you could just insta kill them randomly as well just a really solid good servant all around it's just kind of sucks that comma exists because I feel like this guy was held in a lot higher regard and then Kama came down and then King Hassan kind of got disrespected a little bit, but that's not a fault on him. That's just that Kama is way too good. Kama is just very, very strong. Uh, Yan Ching just crits like a, an absolute freight train. Uh, I think for that alone, even if you might say that he's lacking in some areas, maybe you want him to have some big thick battery or some insane power mod or something along those lines. But Yan yeah, Shin can just absolutely crit like an absolute maniac. I mean, they gave this guy, he's just like Assassin Billy, essentially, minus the 50% battery. I think he's very solid. Uh, Wu. Wu, I think, I the, the issue I have with Wu is like lesser... Cleopatra, but at least when Wu misses her Imperial Privilege, sure, she's missing out on a lot of damage and tankiness, but she still is kind of supporting the party. You know, she's giving them attack, she's giving them a quick buff, she's lowering the enemy's defense, so she's still providing something to the party, even whenever she does miss out on her Imperial Privilege. So I think she's better than some of the more quote unquote usable guys. Uh, Summer Needle Chris, I think, is definitely falling out of favor for me. I don't know, just doesn't feel super great i like when units have damage cut as kind of like a different form of survivability to make them just a bit more tanky instead i think that's kind of neat but the main issue i really find myself with her is that dude it takes you eight million years to take out the bosses and some of these bosses you can't be here for eight million years you gotta chop them down you gotta obliterate them some of these bosses are just charging their np every other turn just blasting you all over the place and you gotta be able to take them out and so I think uh, Summer Needle Chris is definitely in need of some future buffs. Donzo, I remember, did get buffs, I think, recently on JP. She has, like, one of the interesting things where she has both forms of survivability. She has dodge and invul. And she does give herself, you know, solid offensive buffs. It's just her attack is really stupid low, and so she really can't do a whole lot of damage. But I think if they wanted to make Donzo kind of like a support assassin, kind of like what they did with... Oh, let me just get Koyan Sky out of the way. Like, just... just let's just get that one out of the way real quick if they wanted to make her more like a defensive koyan sky i think that could be really good if they want to take her that route but definitely usable as kind of a survival support i guess if that's how you want to look at her but yeah she's gonna need a little bit of work um, Osaka Bahimi, i still think is very strong i think she's one of the more slept on assassins in the game which does kind of suck because you know she buffs quick and buster and we have Scotty, we have Ruler Scotty coming out, we have Merlin, we have Koyan Sky, and unfortunately she's not really doing the same things they're doing. But at the very least, even if you don't want to bring her as a support, she is a very tanky survival unit. Now, it will take her 8 million years to kill the opponent, but you can get to a point where you're looping her NP enough to where she kind of just can't die. She has so much defense that she doesn't take any damage. If you can get that to work out properly, very very fun servant to use very funny in that aspect but i also like that she can double as a support type servant if you don't have anybody better and her support is not bad again she buffs buster and quick she lowers defense she can remove any enemy debuffs like she just does a lot of very good things semi ramis is interesting um well if i have cleopatra there then surely like clea or uh, then semi's like somewhere around there as well because I, I i do like semi ramis having like the 30 percent battery is very helpful 
Although you might be like, oh, so she can bust her farm. That's really good. Unfortunately, her main damage comes from her third skill, which needs the 10 stars, but that's not, that's not the problem, right? Because uh, Koyan Sky already provides 20 stars on her second skill. The issue is that like you have to lower enemies um, buster resistance with it, and that's really what she wants to be doing. Now, it shouldn't be too much of a problem because I think you can loop that on uh, turn one and three, which can be kind of nice if you want to get that massive 50% buster down, get up her damage out. But it does make her wave twos a little bit more awkward unless you want to try to save it for your wave twos and then then try to use it two and three. Something along those lines, I think is obviously fine, but it can make her a little bit awkward, but she's still usable. I think the whole duality class thing of being like both an uh, assassin and a caster is neat, but I don't think it's like particularly broken. She's also got like nice NP gain. I wonder if um, something that she could be lacking is something that I said for like Shuten, where maybe she could be considered a bit better if they gave her some kind of way to capitalize on poison enemies, like a power mod or something. She does also notably, I believe this is on her NP, she gives the entire party buff removal resistance, which I think is super strong, as bosses nowadays are starting to more commonly remove your buffs. I think that could be very, very helpful moving forward. So just keep that in the back of your head if we start to see uh, more bosses that do that. So she's doing a lot of very good things, just not quite enough that I can guarantee put her in A tier. Um... Dude, Izo is just like Art's Kojiro. They're both just so simple servants. They don't do anything better than really anybody else, but they're just strong, good units. I mean, Izo has like one of the most simple kits you've ever seen. He's like, all right, I got the humanoid power mod. I got the, the star weight and the, uh, the crit damage and the dodge. And all right, that's going to have to be enough. <laughs> now, he's going to get a buff for the biking event, you know, because the whole dog joke about him, right? And so he'll get a buff for the, uh, the doggy event over there. And that'll make him certainly a bit better, but he's still just a very simple bungalow servant. You just throw him at people. Just Arts Kojiro. Uh, Summer Ushi. Okay, if I think that you can have some usage for her as an AoE quick assassin, then I think Summer Ushi also has some usage of that, because she also loops a little bit easier. Summer Ushi, let me make sure I'm not misremembering this, but she does have... Isn't it a 40% battery? Yeah, 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 she does have a 40% battery. Yeah, because I'm like, I know her looping isn't the craziest because they kind of skimped out on her hits a little bit and her NP gain they also skimped out a little bit but I the fact that you could still get some value out of her for using that and her other skills ain't bad as to at least be a C plus tier unit for me but uh I've kind of noticed just a few issues when it comes to damage in my usage of Summer Ushi so maybe I don't want to put her in B because she might struggle a little bit but then again that also might just be me uh, thinking of assassins in general not doing very much damage and maybe I should be uh, thinking more about assassin v assassin damage not assassin v you know other classes so I don't know uh, I think you also gets kind of slept on a little bit okay I have to I have to show this because every time I bring this up people just do not believe me they think I'm an absolute crazy person uh, where you see on her NP right here right you see that she removes her debuffs right well what they did what was it on the second skill yeah, yeah, yeah. On the second skill, she gave herself buff removal resistance, so now she doesn't lose any of her buffs anymore. Now, her damage still isn't the craziest. They also have to chuck her this attack buff over here. It's still not the most crazy thing you've ever seen, but she's at least a lot more usable because I agree when she came out, did not have... Um, oh no, she did have the buff removal resistance, but it was only for one turn. Now it's up for three turns. But she only had this, so it was kind of like, well... You get one good turn with you, and then after this goes away, you can't fire the NP because all your other buffs go away. Uh, so now that they made it a three-turn thing, way, way better for her. It's way, way nicer. Also helps that she's Buster, meaning if you pair her with Kalyan Skaya, you can really get that cooldown back to make sure you have that buff removal resistance. Um, Assassin Lee. I mean, just for the fact that you can do absurd amounts of burst damage with him, I think he's kind of got to be up there. Just for the fact that he just hits super hard. <laughs> he just does so much damage. Now, is burst damage really the thing that we really need in FGO right now? I'd argue we're kind of slowly shying away from that. They want units that can be more consistently good over three turns that have these massive spikes where turn one they're insane and then turn two turn three they drop off and then by turn four when all their buffs come back they're insane again you know i think we're kind of shying away from that but he does just hit really hard <laughs> like he does just hit like a freight train and he's got survivability you know he can pierce stuff so he's not like not useful right you could bring him to fights and he'll be good 
it's just I don't know burst damage is not something that I'm particularly a fan of but even I have to acknowledge someone that just punches you for a million damage that just wham hits you like a train man you got to acknowledge it gray I think is one of the better free to play units um I've always said that I think when a free to play guy just has this built in pierce invincibility, it is so nice as a newer player, especially because she's NP5. If you see that a boss is going to be doing something very annoying with dodges and invuls, she can always get around that. The only thing that I really dislike about Gray is what I mentioned, I believe, in her event when I was kind of talking about it. It's still to this day, I think she's a quick servant, but she's a she's buster. Like she's a buster servant. I'll even look, I'm not crazy. I'm not having my uh <laughs> I'm not having my chicanery moment. She's a buster unit, but look at this. So weird. Why does she have a triple quick deck? It's so strange. I don't like it, man. I don't like it. It always throws me off. It really weirds me out. But, you know, even uh, refunding her own NP on her NP on a buster NP, I think is very strong. It really helps with uh, brave chains and follow up and making sure that you could fire your NP consistently by not only having the battery, but the refund on her own NP. And so, I really like what Gray is doing. I think she's a very strong, good free to play servant. So I'm slapping her in A tier. Okay, Corday. Corday, I also think is very usable, very good, but I think she suffers from the same problem that these two guys have. Uh, well, maybe less so because her damage can be good, but Corday, you are kind of playing a little bit of RNG with her third skill. You would really like the NP buff, uh, I. but you could also deal with the, the arts one. But if you get the crit one, I think is the last one. You really don't want that one typically most of the time. Although it could still be nice for doing crits, but she's an arts unit and arts really aren't known for doing uh, crits. They really want to do uh, NP spam. Although Lady Avalon will help out with that when she comes out because she'll give you the massive 100% crit buff. But even that's only for one turn. So, you know, for me, it's... I'd rather her more consistently get the better NP damage since Arts wants to spam a bunch of NPs and I'd rather you get all your damage from that to kind of synergize really well with your supports than try to be a crit unit when that's more of the quick buster thing that they want to do. Oh man, I really, I really wish this was current JP because current JP, dude, she is nuts, bro. You can use her to Black Grail farm. You can use her all over the place. She's so good on JP right now, but as of global... I'm going to cope and say she's at least C. Is that because I like Okita a lot? Yes, but also consider the following. A lot of her buffs are just very, very strong, right? She just has good, strong buffs. Ignore this, right? You don't care about that. You care about this 100% quick da or crit damage on four turn cooldown. She just gives herself a free, okay, that's the buffed one. She just gives herself a free 50% quick mana burst for free, super nice. Who cares about losing defense when you just smack the enemy to death? And then this is just good as well. Survivability, get around evasion, and give yourself a nice 20% NP damage buff. I mean, this is not the craziest thing because this isn't proc first, but dude, it, it, it is it is so annoying, man. It is, why, 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 why are you gimping her in challenge quest, right? Or if you have a lower NP copy Yokita and you need to uh, follow up with like uh, cards and whatnot to guarantee your kill in farming, this can really put a stop to that. But hey, 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 once once they give her this, once they give her this, boys, once they give her this, yeah, we figure out a way to put up with it. We we put up with it once we get that. Once we get that, then she's good. Then she's crazy. But right now, kind of kind of bummy. Uh, Kichi Hogan, I feel is just a solid free-to-play unit. I don't quite like her as much as I like Gray, but I do like Kichi Hogan being able to decently farm, decently support, and do okay damage, right? Like, I don't think she does any one thing particularly insane, which I think is kind of true to her character, that she kind of just does a little bit of good things everywhere, but not one thing exceptionally well. And I kind of am liking her in this kind of solid B tierish area where you can kind of just bring her for whatever your needs arise, right? And I mean, she is also one of those units, though, that as you get a better and stronger box, you're probably going to end up replacing her. But yeah, I can see that this video was a lot shorter than the other ones because I just have so much <laughs> less to say about assassins, man. They're I mean, let's let's be honest. It's it's in their name, dude. They it's they're not a very good class. They put it twice. All right. <laughs> but well, with that being said, I'll leave this in the description for those guys that want to make their own tier list. Want to go show it off in the discord and you want to be like hey man i actually think this guy is up dude I, this is the one tier list i'll tell you guys i don't even care bro you could put whoever you want anywhere and i, I don't care dog because as long as you get like the good people up here as long as as long as we acknowledge people like mhx 
Kama, Hassan, Koyinskaya, you know, her, they're, they're all good. I don't care where you put these guys. I just don't care. Like, <laughs> I just don't care. But with all that being said, I'll catch you guys in the next video.